welcome everyone to the series of uh, Hindu wellness webinar. This edition will be on the impact of epilepsy in children and its management. <coughs> Road towards epilepsy cure. We have with us two eminent panelists who between them have treated thousands of patients in New York International. Dr. Fishike Sarkar, Director, Department of Neurosurgery, will be speaking on surgical options in epilepsy. He has around 20 years of experience and has performed over 3,000 brain and spinal surgeries with results on a par with the leading international centers. He has special proficiency in keyhole endoscopic and minimally invasive surgeries for brain tumors in both adults and children. He has a rich experience in epileptic surgeries across all age groups. He's introduced combinatorial neuro-restorative neuro surge strategies such as nerve transfers and epidural cord stimulation in paraplegia, hemoplegia due to stroke, traumatic brain injury, and spinal cord injury. His innovations include Bellow Localizer, a tool to improve accuracy of shunt placement, novel minimally, minimally invasive surgical approach, uh, shunt protection device, and animal model to study stroke. Welcome, Dr. Rishike Sarkar. We have with us Dr. Bindu Thakkapan. She's a senior neurologist at the hospital, and she'll be speaking on impact of epilepsy. She has over 17 years of experience in the field of neurology, and she has treated more than 1,000 stroke patients. Her expertise is on stroke management, aided uh, and it created her to start the first thrombolysis unit in Alapura district in Kerala. Her special interests are in management of stroke, epilepsy, and teachings. Welcome, Doctor. I request Doctor Vindu uh, Tankapan to start her uh, presentation. Thank you very much, uh, Sujada Ma'am, for that well. Kind introduction. And without much delay, I would like to go into further presentation. Are my slides visible? Yeah. A very good morning to one and all. Today we are gathered here to have some awareness about the impact of epilepsy. Though at this moment, I cannot talk about the impact of epilepsy about the whole spectrum of population, but about children. And why children, you might ask? Because as you all know, it's a developing brain and therefore any insult on that will produce long-standing, devastating consequences in the form of developmental delay and cognitive impairment. Now, when I talk about epilepsy, you might ask, what is this? Just a simple terms, brain is full of small balls like neurons and wires from it called nerve fibers or axons. And these axons are the ones which carry electrical impulses, just like our electrical wires. Now, just remember if there any electrical system, if there is a short circuit, what will happen? Flame, isn't it? So just like that, if it's in the brain, a short circuit occurs. That means it's an abnormal electrical discharges. So that will amount to the dysfunction of that part of the brain, which is supposed to function. Suppose it affects, you know, that from that part, 
spreads to the other part, other side of the brain. So that means it can also lead on to the low subconsciousness. So it can be, you know, with the awareness or without awareness. Most of the time, we just don't know the term meaning. Seizures, epilepsy. Sometimes we, hand in hand, we use the same terms, but it's not one and the same. When you say it's an epilepsy, it is a disease condition, which is characterized by more than two unprovoked seizures. That means after the blue, it comes with about 24 hours apart. Now, when you call it seizure, now that means that it's a sudden uncontrolled electrical activity producing, could be it's resulting in some change of the behavior or sensation or abnormal movements, which is more common. So seizure is just an event. About 10% of the population normally can have one episode of seizure in their lifetime, but not epilepsy. Epilepsy means you need to have the above, above defined condition and it is a disease entity and that is what we are talking today. Now it can start from any age, either from the childhood or it can also occur de novo in people over six years of age. And the causes can be very many, can be from you know, congenital malformations, the birth or genetic problems or infections of the brain, stroke, trauma to the head, tumor of the head, and metabolic conditions. But most of the time, you know, after extensive investigations, 70% of the population will have, will not have a known cause. So we call idiopathic. Now, this is coming to about second largest chronic neurological disorders all over the world. Now, what is a good part of this is that the good news is that it's 70% is fully treatable. And what is the bad news about it? Seven out of the 10 people with epilepsy do not get treatment. And this is more so in a developing country like India, where people are not aware of whether that is a seizure or not. And if at all, there is no trained personnel, especially in the remote areas of India. All the more, there is something like a social stigma that means people think that those who are having a seizures are having some ghosts inside their body or they're mad and that's why they do like this. And therefore, the parents of the children think that if I take the child to the doctor, everybody will come to know, my neighbors will come to know, my relatives come to know, school will come to know, and that will make the child isolated. Not only that, that will further impair them a good future. Like if it is a girl child, they'll think that, okay, this child will not be get married when she get, grows up and uh, she might be having a doomed future. So that is a social stigma still prevalent even after so many decades of awareness about the epilepsy. Very pathetic situation. And that's the same reason why we want to do some awareness programs about epilepsy like this. And last but not the least, in the developing country like we, India, we have you know, a small group of population who are not affordable the, to, the, to buy the medications. Now, the impact is, depends on various factors. The first and foremost is the frequency and the in severity of the seizures. Like if it is occurring daily or monthly or weekly, it becomes a cumbersome affair for the child and associated depression. Sometimes they'll have a worry that what if I get seizures when I'm going around and playing around? What if, if I get seizures in the school? So a lot of anxiety about the seizures, especially in the parents more than in the child. Child may not be aware of all these things, but the, the parents become more anxious. Plus, they, there is a side effects from the anti seizure medications. It could be dizziness and nausea and feeling very tired and sleepy all the time. And last, the stigma. So the you have the patient with so many structural lesions or sometimes functional lesions and you have the epileptic medications, psychiatric comorbidities like depression, anxiety, plus there might be some developmental delay if in the case of child, in rare cases. Now, how 
that will impact the life of the child is because when the child interact with the family members and with the friends and the cultural environment as a whole society as a whole there is an influence from them towards the child some still treat child to have that you know ghost sitting inside and get isolated from the whole general population so that is being reflected in the education when they go to grow up and go to job or in the case of healthcare also that still prevails now the medication is to decrease the seizures the goal of any treatment whatsoever is to free from what the patient is having so so much so with seizure so the seizure freedom is actually very very uh, it, it, you cannot tell that you are free from seizures especially when you are giving medication it is just preventing the further recurrence in in a group of individuals that increase in frequency will be coming down and the seizures can be totally freed that is a very small amount of population in 70 percentage it will decrease the recurrence now what about the 30 percentage you add new drugs then again more and more drugs so when it becomes more than two drugs in the maximum tolerable dose and the patient is not responding to your drugs there is no point in adding third fourth fourth drug because that is less likely to get respond there comes a role of surgery and neuromodulation procedures like vagal nerve stimulation as well as diet so the surgical aspect my colleague dr rishikesh sarkar will be elaborating more upon it as well as about the vagal nerve stimulation there is a special diet called a ketogenic diet which can improve the seizures now this is a two year this is a story of a two year old boy at the age of 4 months the mother noticed seizures and the baby whenever the baby used to get seizures the mother used to take snaps and that is one of the important tool to diagnose epilepsy nowadays so parents all of those watching who have the child who have epilepsy have you know there is a chance that this seizures can be brought to doctors notice by taking a video clipping rather than observing it and telling out a picture represents thousand words so now you are able to find out that the child is having tonic posturing and chronic movements of the limbs this has occurred in the baby's home so this child had when they came had three drugs and that was uh, optimized to two drugs and was put on ketogenic diet you just don't believe it the baby could uh, decrease the number of seizures plus the baby was sitting quiet and there is a lot of change in the behavior the baby was hyper alert and hyperactive and all sort of you know uh, tantrums he used to do it the mother is so happy that the baby not only had control of seizures but decrease in the behavioral modification also could occur so the definition is new definition is that the disorder of the brain with an enduring predisposition to generate the epileptic seizures plus its neurobiologic psychological cognitive and social consequence of this condition so that means we need to take care of the whole aspect so as an individual we need to take self care and then we need to know about what all things especially the treatment is an interdisciplinary treatment plan which has it's got its own importance and we have to include the psychosocial worker the psychologist the dietitian physician etc who will tackle the psychosocial aspects also so living with epilepsy means we need to aware of what is that and how can we prevent and how can you recommend when to meet the doctor 
and how to improve the quality of life of that individual. These are the website that is all over the world. People search for to find out the new and new modalities of treatment and what to do when an epilepsy occurs. And you can know a lot about your own type of epilepsy from these, you know, websites. These are all WHO website and Epilepsy International League Against Epilepsy. So these are international uh, websites where you, you get a lot of educational resources for uh, compacting epilepsy. So we think you know, that we have the expertise as well as the infrastructure to treat epilepsy and towards epilepsy cure. Thank you. Thank you very much for the patient listening. Thank you, ma'am. That was extremely interesting. And I did not know that such young children also suffered from epileptic seizures. Your presentation was awesome. Thank you Thank very you. much. Uh, I request Dr. Vishikesh to please start his presentation. It was a learning experience. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone, and uh, thank you to the Hindu group. Thank you to the management committee of Muot International for giving us the opportunity to come and give the talk on epilepsy and its management. Uh, being a neurosurgeon, I would be focused on what are the surgical options available to manage and cure epilepsy. Uh, this slide shows a very interesting number. 4994. It's a palindrome number. If you can read from both backwards and forwards, it's going to be the same sequence. The importance of this number is that a person who started on one medicine has about 50% of chance of being free from epilepsy. However, when two medicines are required, that number drop, drops down to just 9%. That means only 9 out of 100 will have some control over epilepsy. What if we add three medicines? Hardly anything, 4%. That means 96% of patients will continue to have epilepsy despite being on three medications. What if the surgery is an, offered an option? It has a potential to treat about 50 to 95% of patients depending on the type of epilepsy depending upon the networks associated and various other factors. And this clearly shows that any patient who is on two medications and more has a significant chance of being able to cure of his illness, cure of his epilepsy because of a surgical option. And this is what is known as medically refractory epilepsy. To sum it all, surgical options are nothing but a three. Basically, finding where the problem is in the brain. Once the problem is found, to burn it. Literally, it doesn't mean by burn, we put in some fire and burn it. We use surgical tools to have a precise destruction of the tissue or stun the tissue, stun the abnormal tissue. It's just like defibrillating the heart, it's quick starting the heart, jump starting the car. It's similarly, this is called as neuromodulation. And neuromodulation, like vagal nerve stimulator, can be used to jumpstart the brain. Things like deep brain stimulation can be used to jumpstart the brain and correct the cause. Now, to give the enormity of the problem, it's very simple to say, find it, burn it, and um, buzz it. Uh, but however, just to give a brief idea about the complexity of the issue, this is a photograph, and you can see a lot of parakeets over there. And for a moment, please look very closely in this photograph and try to identify a butterfly. There's a butterfly hidden somewhere and name the color of the butterfly. You got 10 seconds. I'm going to wait over here in Q and A box. You can say, or you can write the color. Sorry, I think I've already given you that. Thing. Sorry, color of the butterfly. And imagine this parakeets to be normal neuronal cells, normal brain cells, and they should not be disturbed at all. And our role as a surgeon is to pick up the butterfly and then remove it from the cluster of the birds, which you can see. So the time starts now for next se seven seconds, if you're able to identify that butterfly and, and the color of the butterfly. One, 
please put your responses in the q and a box those who are listening 1 2 3 4 5 6 right let me give you the answer so there it is in the yellow circle small butterfly with the color it's pink i am sure that people are very, it's very easy to now recognize that so just this complexity magnified into 1 billion or 1 million or 100 million and this is how we go about finding that abnormal focus which is really responsible for abnormal activity arising out of the brain and this figure also shows that the area which is enveloped in orange that orange area which encompasses a problematic zone where from where the abnormal elliptical activity is starting the symptoms where they are arising from and any lesion or any tumor or anything associated with that that entire orange zone is our target and this is what we go about finding and that orange zone is known as epileptogenic zone and there are various strategies and various multidisciplinary things which are required to identify the correct candidate with an epileptogenic zone which can be addressed surgically so a participation or multidisciplinary team is required to find out that epileptic zone and associated network so you need a participation of specialist like dr bindu who is a specialist in epilepsy neuropsychologist the neurophysiologist our nuclear medicine specialist and various other interdisciplinary people to identify and get across and find out the right candidate who would benefit with surgery if you classify the surgical procedure what is done for the epilepsy the few procedures are for the diagnosis that means to finding out the abnormal area in the brain and there is something called a therapeutic once the area is found out either as i said you burn it or resect it or you remove it or you stun it or you do neuromodulation that's what it essentially means and resective surgery essentially involves removal of a lesion or an abnormal area which is seen on the mri scan sometime it is seen on the mri sometime it is not seen on the mri scan or disconnect an abnormal area from the normal structure so that the electrical activity the abnormal electrical activity does not spread in the surrounding normal brain zapping the brain or stunning the brain involves either something called as vagal nerve stimulation where one does not even need to open a brain the vagal nerve is situated in the neck and a pacemaker device can be placed within the vicinity of the nerve and that can create electrical impulse impulses which can normalize the electrical activity of the brain another form is deep brain stimulation which also can be utilized in some form of epilepsy so one would ask how do you decide about resective or removal or neuromodulation or vagal nerve it all depends on the age of the patient the type of epilepsy the localization of the network and the characterization of something called as epileptogenic zone we'll just try to understand by taking few cases this is a 15 year old child female presents with multiple episodes of seizures about 3 to 5 episodes per day leading to fall and frequent hospitalization is on multiple medications huge dose and medications per se they are causing drowsiness sleepiness lack of memory concentration and other things so this patient is being evaluated and the mri scan and a pet scan is being shown the pet scan is colorful structure which you can see in green blue and red and orange mri scan is black and white and the arrow points towards an anomaly which is seen in something called as temporal lobe which is located in the area above the ear the right ear and we also do something called as prolonged eeg monitoring eeg is nothing but measuring electrical activity of the brain and the eeg activity of this child corresponded or pointed to the problem located in the temporal lobe as you can see in the diagram alongside so this child once we have localized that the problem is in the temporal lobe 
and once we have ascertained that the memory is not going to be impaired after removal of this focus then we embark on a procedure which is a resective procedure to remove this abnormal area and that's what you are able to see on the, the right side panel you can see the abnormal area document in the white and this area is removed on the adjacent panel and this surgery is called as right anterior temporal lobectomy and this is done under microsurgical guidance a high end microscope is used and this is the human brain and this is these numbers are actually the various areas which are being monitored for abnormal electrical activities and that area is being identified and slowly and gradually under microsurgical computer navigation guided guidance this area is removed you can see that abnormal area being removed and the adjacent area which is also looking abnormal that is also is being removed gradually slowly and steadily there is another area which is close and deeper which is responsible for the memory and making sure that memory area is not impaired various neurosurgical tools like robot like neuro navigation intra operative continuous monitoring of the brain data all this thing is being done very gradually and carefully making sure that we are not giving any complications to the patient in terms of memory loss paralysis coma or any other thing so this child has had this surgery done and had an excellent outcome with seizure freedom being achieved second case just a 6 month old infant with some history of oxygenation issue during the birth and the child has been having severe seizures since the second day of birth five to six times per day multiple episodes and child's growth in terms of brain development movement development language development is not improving is something called as neurodevelopmental decline child also has a weakness the right side there is a weakness involved and every possible drug combination in the world appropriate for this kind of epilepsy has been tried and i'm not going to the elaborate list even the ketogenic diet which dr bindu just mentioned and emphasized on that's been tried despite that five to six times severe seizure leading to something called as catastrophic epilepsy again eeg shows catastrophic epilepsy mri shows if you see this is the right side of the brain this is the left side of the brain the entire left half of the brain is malformed it is ill formed and it is discharging abnormally so this patient underwent something called as functional hemispherectomy where this abnormal tissue which is not doing anything productive but just discharging abnormally is taken off and very good result following the surgery the two years from the surgery the child remains seizure free and not only that at the end of 3 years the child gained all the language motor and other cognitive milestone which patient was not able to do that before case number 3 which does not require any cranial opening head opening 18 year old male with staring spells yeah, so continuous staring spells brief lasting for about 2 to 3 minutes followed by severe seizures involving jerky movement of both hands and leg every month with severe disability not being able to go to the school not able to write not able to learn new things and again the same story one medicine two medicines three medicines four see the five medicines have been tried and nothing is being controlled and here he undergoes a very elaborate evaluation in our, our epilepsy board eeg video eeg pet scan mri scan everything is normal however the eeg scan shows that there is an abnormal activity which is coming up from both the hemisphere and there is no one particular area which is responsible or identifiable for production of these kind of a seizures so these kind of a difficult epilepsy cases are generalized epilepsy and in children there is something called as lennox gestalt syndrome or genetic generalized epilepsy vagal nerve therapy is very very useful and during vagal nerve therapy as this cartoon demonstrate there is a pacemaker device which is placed on the chest wall and there is a wire coming out through that and the wire the tip of the wire has got a small microelectrode 
that is placed on the vagal nerve which nerve is directly connected to the brain and this device is so fantastic that it senses the oncoming seizures and before it can convert into a major seizure it will start discharging and once it start discharging the electrical activity abnorm at the specifically the abnormal electrical, electrical activity of the brain that becomes controlled and the patient no longer has seizure so in this case as i described with various current settings patients became seizure free after 3 months after the implantation and he was gradually weaned off of five medications and after 3 years with a single medicine he finished his schooling and i'm very happy and proud to say and this is what he gifted us you know he was not able to read and he wanted to learn new things this is how he came up with a brilliant and beautiful drawing after vns maybe after 2 years after implantation and we were so happy to see this outcome which was not possible without having a collaborative team work and a very proper evaluation process so i'll sum i will stop over here and sum that surgery is definitely an effective treatment not only to control but also to cure epilepsy especially in medically refractory epilepsy cases however we need to have a team work and this kind of a team work is not there in most of the centers in india and there exists a huge gap between the demand and supply and here in miot international as a team we are here and we are here to pave the road to cure in epilepsy this is our epilepsy team you see there is no one particular person who is responsible for the epilepsy is a team there are so many people who have been illustrated in this team and i am very proud to have each one of them with a unique ability and a passion to treat the epilepsy it's not control we are talking about curing the epilepsy and we strongly believe that as a joint effort we can indeed achieve that with that background i am very happy to announce that we are soon going to have a specialized epilepsy clinic focused towards children and that's going to start from the 2nd of may and going to last until 7th of may the unique thing about this camp is the patient with epilepsy particularly those with two or three medications seizures are still continuing they will be evaluated by our entire team under one roof Uh, with concessional rate as far as investigations are concerned and they will get a fairly comprehensive idea about appropriate treatment and management which every single child deserve therefore give your child a childhood this is what a thing which are coming up with me art thank you very much again to the mayor to the hindu group and to our md sir for this uh, opportunity to present i'll stop my presentation over here and uh, i would again thanks also dr uh, uh, sujatha madam for introduction and for giving this opportunity we we'll leave the house open for discussion thank you very much thank you dr sathar again this was a very interesting uh, presentation some of it i we have not heard of earlier and uh, it's nice that you are starting a clinic for children there is one question from somebody called kavi nandini anandan so she says her friend is 28 years old and he now has epileptic seizures but the case is not serious she says the her friend is undergoing medication currently and he was identified at the age of 25 so she says she wants to know if it is permanent and whether he should take medications permanently would it be a lifelong thing for him can can you please explain to her what the what it could mean the patient the very little data that she's given so i think based on that we'll have to <clears throat> yes uh, most of the case usually it all dip- whether it's permanent requirement of anti epileptic drugs is to to be taken or not depends upon the cost suppose after extensive investigations we are not by eeg by video eeg and three tesla mri with epilepsy protocol if we are not able to find out the exact cause the usual 
duration of treatment is that is about 3 years because the recurrence the rate of recurrence is maximum in the first 3 years of the onset the first onset of the episode so if in a idio so we call it as idiopathic so in that case in the first 3 years if uh, we will put putting the person on anti epileptic so like this if he responds like if he has no further seizures and his eeg is normal his mri is normal his neurological examination is absolutely normal so we will taper at the end of 3 years and stop that is the usual duration of treatment but if we could find out any cause for that seizures with mri showing structural changes then if it is a resectable case we have to subject to resection and if it is at a uh, you know in this uh, resectable area and if you you have to prove that that from that area the seizures occurs that is the role of video eeg ftg pet and uh, uh, 3 tesla mri now if we could find out there is a lesion yes that that requires surgical research now suppose you have something like a stroke or you have something like you know another lesion which is not resectable but has to be treated with medication then both needs paripasu treatment in this patient i think with this limited amount uh whether his mri is normal whether his eeg is normal so without knowing that we may not be able to tell up to what time period that he has to take the seizures and lifelong or not that depends upon the cause it is like for example when you when you have when you meet a when you you know when you have a head trauma and you have a major gliosis inside it. gliosis means in uh, ordinary terms a scar like when you have a small cut a small cut in your skin it doesn't produce a scar throughout your life you will never know that whether there was a cut or not but suppose if it suppose is deep very much deep that will be seeing till your end of your life right that will be leaving a scar in your skin similarly in brain also if this is a serious insult in the form of you know brain hemorrhage and further trauma to the brain so obviously it will leave a scar and that needs like some treat because that cannot be resectable or it's a gliosis it's a scar of the insult dr rishikesh do you want to add anything on to this to what i have said no i think what you said is absolutely true and i concur with what you are saying um the the thing with epilepsy is the, the most of the the problem i have seen with the control is most of the patients do not comply what happens is once the uh, seizures are under control they either tend to forget this thing and uh, it may be under peer pressure or by by circumstantial thing so the problem is most of the seizure recurrence is due to compliance issue and i think this also one strong message we need to pass to public that to be compliant with medications not only the number of medication the correct dosage because as the age advances the weight also increases the body's metabolism also changes so the dosage also needs to be optimized and it's important to be in touch with the neurologist who can really keep a monitor and keep a check over the correct dosage correct pattern of medication and also keep a watch on the adverse effects associated with medication sometimes the adverse effect were very subtle um loss a little memory impairment little bit of confusion sleeping issues those things can also impair functionality of the patient or so so there are things around so called cure with medications treatment with medication but it's very very important to keep a follow up with the neurologist or a neurosurgeon and with the medications now there are these apps also available where one can um, one can put the data of the medicine and the app will tell you oh, you have forgotten to take this dose you need to take it or not it's a reminder app kind of a thing which is again will be proven to be useful in management of epilepsy and prevent seizures 
thank you doctor that was really interesting sir madam and sir a lot of learning i'm having today because i was just going to ask uh, what happens if somebody has a trauma somebody has had a fall and then they start having uh, epileptic seizures uh, so th there has been such a case that i know of so i thought i was going to ask that but dr bindu and you have already answered this question so then there was there is this question there was one person who had actually said she had seizures uh two years or three years ago but after that she had been on medication but then nothing happened and i think now she says she's in the morning she's taking some medicines and then uh, she's uh, uh maybe maybe pill maybe pill uh maybe pill 500 mg and then uh, 1000 mg of maybe pill and uh, well i think she uh, she is also taking something for night for deficiency of calcium so she had seizures in 2018 but then i think uh, after that she's not had so she wants to know what could be the issue whether she would have it again these are very sketchy uh, details that she's given yes uh, but then with the limited data again the same dictator that if her eg is normal the mri the three test the mri with the epilepsy protocol normal all the blood investigation normal there is no you know there is something like neurocutaneous syndromes like it can occur at any point of your life you not have have to have uh, occur in the childhood sometimes you might have some you know brown kind of pigments around the body and it may not throw a seizures some point of a time it will have to throw so if you are having that kind of things that actually you need a examination by the neurologist to uh, even if that's a single episode of seizures we have to look but i think with if the mri and the eg everything is normal and if she does not have any further seizures of course 2018 first episode and while on medications she had never so she she has to but consult a neurologist and has to be yeah, the neurologist has to view the first data the the first seizures and the imaging and the uh, eeg then can come to a conclusion whether she can stop it or not so here is another question i think dr rishikesh this could be for you uh, my son is 16 years old and he has uh, that it is disappeared okay i think uh, that's gone so anyway i think yeah i think i'm try i'm trying to answer i saw that question is in the answered thing my son is 16 years and he has at first seizure at age of 10 okay. um if we started his medication at age of 13 okay. and he gets a seizure in a span of i think every 3 oh. months followed by vomiting headache etc but however they see that the intensity is mild nowadays how can we get it cured he is in a sing he is on a single medicine uh i think to uh, i think that dr bindu i think you should be able to answer that uh, first yeah. i guess because he is right now only on single medicine i'm not sure about the dosage pattern whether the yeah, dosage yeah. pattern should correct or not so you want to just focus some yes, something yes. on that uh seizures at the age of 3 years and uh it was once where she had he had severe fever at that now he is 11 years so uh some see the there is some entity called febrile seizures uh, no no so that uh, is from 6 uh, months to 6 years no dr bindu this is about yeah. different different case this is this is a, now the patient is 16 years had a first seizure at 10 years of age and started medication at the age of 13 he gets a seizure in span of every 3 to 4 months is having seizures however the intensity has become mild but still he is getting seizures every 3 to 4 months how can it get cured he is in a single medicine single medicine but uh, how much uh, i am not able to see the question in my uh, q and a it's there in the answer the answer to open the question and answer segment there is something called answer where there are two two answered questions so this is the second question that's been uh, Yes. Okay. Okay. What? Ah, uh, uh, what was the dose written on the uh, the first single right. tablet? Ah, uh, right. So given any dosage. Right. So if to, if I'll answer this actually. So yeah. I think what we need to do is we have to understand 
what kind of medicine he is getting what is the dosage he is on yeah. what is the body weight of this particular person and what kind of educational and developmental activities he has had all this while uh, whether the medicine is causing problem or not essentially he would be definitely he will require an evaluation by our team of uh, epilepsy and uh, i think we would highly recommend if he is in chennai to visit us um, i think we're going to have a elaborative camp on this specific issue and address these things uh, it's very difficult to answer this directly in form of one single uh, answer here i have a feeling it might has to be do with the dosage of medication as i had said before also most often these kind of a breakthrough seizures in a growing age is due to inappropriate dosage and and dosage regimen actually thank you doctor here is one question to both of you uh, this is about this is an anonymous attendee who says his son had a seizure uh, seizure seizure when he was 3 uh, years old and it was just once because he had severe fever and after now he's 11 years old and there's been no recurrence but then he's saying should i be worried should i be concerned that could relax or it could come back at some other point in time yes if the baby uh, is uh, absolutely normal development with a normal age and all so the child is yeah. not when the, when the baby's first seizures was uh, had occurred at the age of 3 years if the eeg was normal and the mri was normal i don't think there is a need to worry usually there is an entity called a febrile seizures occurring in a totally normal children absolutely normal development from 6 months to 6 years so that is because of the you know immature brain getting susceptible to the increase of the body temperature so as the brain gets mature so that goes off so it's an age associated uh, now you can say a normal variation but it will not have lifelong or long lasting consequences there is a rare group of individual where in which these uh, babies would also have some genetic epileptic vulnerability so those kind of individuals also gets precipitated by fever but they will continue to have seizures again so in a typical febrile seizures that will not occur after 6 years mind you this we will we will f- at the first episode of the seizure itself when the baby had a fever if the baby was seen by a pediatrician or a neurologist they might have evaluated and said that the eeg was normal and mri was normal everything was normal so there is no need for him uh, uh, to worry mm-hmm. dr sakar do you want to add to it Uh, no i think uh, my expertise uh, is not that much compared to dr bindu in terms of febrile seizures so i don't have anything to add on to that thank you sir thank you so much so there is somebody here who is asking is uh, rehabilitation therapeutic uh, i mean he says therapeutic exercise is it helpful yes Th- there is nothing like a therapeutic exercise Right. but then uh, uh, by neuro uh, by rehabilitation what we would like to uh, you know uh, say or project is that the, uh, the simultaneously the patients might be having uh, in the case of children the seizures might be having consistent developmental delay sometimes you know if there is a decreased blood circulation in your brain at the time of birth there will be spasticity of the we call it cerebral palsy so in these kind of individuals we really need the overall treatment it is not that the, the decrease in the seizure recurrence alone we want to improve the quality of life of that child in that situations you obviously need to increase the locomotion ability plus you need to make the child as a normal child so whatever physical disabilities you have you have to realize about that and you have to give appropriate treatment there comes the role of neuro rehabilitation and suppose a child had you know met uh, have uh, congenital malformations of the brain which 
need not which cannot be rectified otherwise so they they cannot be left alone just by giving medications for seizures they cannot be left alone so they also have to be brought back to the mainstream of uh, you know they should also be they have a right to have a good quality life in this situations the the neuro rehabilitation has got an immense especially the speech development can be done there can be we can give cognitive retraining we can decrease the spasticity of the you know muscles and make them do whatever they can they can with the limited disabilities so oh, so before that we we will assess how far the baby is disabled and we can give appropriate physiotherapy means that will be awesome because in the child it's like you know a clay we can mold accordingly as you become old it's you know when the joint becomes stiff and uh, uh, it will be difficult but in the early childhood days if we have a disability it's very very you know it's very actually uh, moldable stage so we can do a lot with the neuro rehabilitation in a child with epilepsy so there is that is a role. and in adult also we have you know met with so many traumatic brain injury patients young boys like you know has a rash raised and met with a accident and uh, after the blue they come with a uh, they were absolutely normal till then so after that they have a downhill course because of the brain insult so much of injury to the brain and they also will be they were might be in a, you know intensive care with a ventilator with a tracheostomy all those tubes into instill in the body but then once they come out and it is our responsibility to to bring them back to life by giving that you know locomotive ability cognitive retraining find out how what all languages he knew how to make him you know communicate but there is uh, ability to comprehend is there so all this a patient alive means he should be able to you know do the at least day to day activities to his minimum extent so to make him that we need to really go through in a rehabilitative point of view also just giving medications to decrease the seizures is not enough that is only i think one part of it that is the uh, role comes for the team uh, team work and uh, i think is dr rishikesh do you want to add anything uh, regarding this rehabilitation uh, 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 rehabilitation essentially is focused on psychological and cognitive uh, aspects and getting them enhanced where there is a background deficiency in those parameters and somehow bring the child or young adults to a level where they can function independently so the rehabilitation the meaning itself is to rehabilitate them them as far as psychological cognitive and social issues are concerned and fortunately at miot we have an excellent neuro rehabilitation rehabilitation center dedicated to neurological work and also epilepsy forms an integral aspect of it so it is a vital element in the treatment of an epilepsy which is just not only control of seizures or control of any physical phenomena and as dr bindu pointed out in her presentation it involves social economical and overall cognitive rehabilitation hence for neuro rehab plays a very very vital role as far as any single exercise is concerned to do with epilepsy uh, i am not aware of but pranayama therapy is supposed to soothe the nerves and it's also supposed to control and regulate brain activity so this is something which i can add on from my side but however i am not again aware of any specific exercise pattern or so thank you doctor and uh, i think that is something that you have also uh, spoken about how many you i think you have asked how many of you think epilepsy surgery requires opening the head so so i am not getting any response in the q and a but suddenly it's popping up lot of q and a's are popping up over yeah, here yeah. i'm i'm distracted right now <laughs> okay so, so let the let the responses uh, uh, come come that way uh, okay. but we will take up some questions which i have answered over here i guess i think there is another question like my son is 2 years old yeah. he was born with hie and uh, mri shows multiple cystic lesions in the brain Mm. is already on five anti epileptic medicines and mm. still the seizures are severe yeah multiple 
multiplication i think this, this goes to uh, dr rishikesh sirka multiplication to the brain can surgery be done again a very interesting clinical phenomena we need to ascertain what these kind what the brain lesions are whether there are infection or whether need, they need to be treated this again requires an evaluation cannot be answered directly over here but i can say there is a potential i can see a potential of an effective treatment and maybe cure so they must get in touch with us and our team for for better treatment and management thank you sir so here's another uh, here's another something here even if surgeries are uh, cannot be done there is a role of neuromodulation that is the that means the role of you know putting battery like the sir has already mentioned in his talk mm. vagal nerve stimulator that is you put a battery in the subcutaneous region just below the collarbone and trying to decrease the number of episodes of seizures by stimulating the vagal nerve so that is called vagal nerve stimulation so even if your child cannot undergo seizures don't get upset there are other modalities of treatment especially in a case with you know the uh, poor mom she might be very worried because of five anti epileptic medication and still the seizures so so this still role even if surgery cannot be possible also these uh, uh, we need to really see the child but the role of neuromodulation comes in the picture thank you ma'am so here is somebody another anonymous attendee so who is speaking about uh, the, uh, cousin in trichy her child uh, she has repeated seizures since the age of 4 years currently the child is 7 years old what's special about the so she i think this person wants to know what is special about the clinic and uh, they say you have you can cure epilepsy could you please explain can you guide the cousin the attendee is asking Uh, so, yeah. yeah there is not much details about what actually the child is going through but since the age of 4 years i think i guess you should ask them to visit your clinic so that you can evaluate the child and guess yes, yes. what you can do yes true so, i mean uh, off off hand we, can, we may not be able to tell you that you know uh, that child Uh, can be cure curable or things like that but we need to really see that baby who had seizures at the age of 4 years so was there any cause in the brain or genetically so we need to really know about that whether the eg was normal or abnormal and at what kind of epilepsy the baby was having it all it all depends upon all these factors to finally come to a conclusion that it can be cured or not so there are so many factors down the lane i think it is advisable that if we could possibly bring that child uh, we can give more uh, service to you and you know explain to you that what all can be done even if it is the baby is in trichy i think that's not a point like in, uh, they can come and they can make an get an appointment and they can come we'll give you the our expert advice after discussion with all the teams so here is somebody somebody called kartik chandran so he says uh, he has heard that children born with epilepsy do not achieve developmental milestones on time so once seizures are stopped by treatment do you think the children will be lead a normal life will they meet uh, developmental life what if milestones would they achieve them like normal children i think that's what is wrong yeah again again this uh, depends upon the the type of epilepsy the uh, the uh, the cause of the epilepsy there is something like a uh, genetic epilepsy then there is something like an epilepsy syndromes in that case of course uh, uh, it is a syndrome means it's an epileptic uh, along with the epilepsy there will be that what are what the what that cause epilepsy is the one which causes the developmental delay so we may not be able to rectify it but without knowing that we cannot categorically tell that all the kids that is born with epilepsy will not achieve the developmental milestone for example like 
there is a small babies in the newborn nursery will often often used to get calls like it's called benign myoclonic epilepsy it's a benign myoclonus so in the sleep they will have jerks the mother will you know be uh, uh, giving uh, milk to the baby will be seeing the jerks and because panicky bring to us the eg will be normal and on follow up the development will be normal so those kind of babies even if the seizures is there and could stop the development is not going to get arrested that will continue to so we need to see that baby with that epilepsy at that point of time though it is a it was is a recurrent seizures it did not interfere with the development so like that there are certain age you know the age related epilepsy we called a uh, uh, age related epilepsy means another example is called a benign nocturnal uh, from, uh, epilepsy it's called brolandic epilepsy so those babies will surpass the once they surpass the age the epilepsy won't occur they'll have a normal development so the 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 categorization of epilepsy actually in the diagnosis itself we will we have to find out what type of epilepsy the baby is having and whether it is fitting into a genetic syndromes so all these factors you know are to be considered before saying that the child will be normal so if there's i told you know in genetic epilepsies around the epileptic encephalopathy is we call it's called epilepsy syndromes best syndrome lennox gastro so, so many syndromes are there so those babies of course the development will be affected but uh, the other category where there is an age associated epilepsy they will not have any uh, developmental delay or there will be mild delay but then once the seizures are controlled they will not having a recurrence it's an it, with the age that, that will get uh, and with proper treatment we need to really treat also but it's for a, that short period of time they can be normal later on thank you ma'am thank you very much and thank you. Uh, here is another question uh, i will just keep one question i'll come back to that later so dear doctors my daughter is 6 years old uh, she has bilateral occipital epilepsy first episode on 17th february second episode on 15th april we have started uh, medication levy pill Uh, are there any side effects of levipil and then uh, i think uh, they have given even the dosage yeah maybe uh, sorry i am good at this but anyway 100 yeah. syrup so the child is on syrup uh, and can you please explain about ketonic diet yeah it she means ketogenic is ketogenic diet yeah yeah it's uh, it's uh, auto thing so levetiracetam uh, uh, i think 100 mg syrup means i don't know what's the weight and the how much the baby is getting i think with a normal weight it's and a normal year old, the girl is 6 year 6 year old and she has bilateral occipital epilepsy yes. the first episode was on 17th february and the second episode was on 15th april and they put her on this levy tiracetam uh, mm. ip um, 100 mg syrup yeah so uh in a normal therapeutic dose levetiracetam is not going to have much of a side effect when it becomes a toxic dose that is in children is around 40 to 60 mg per kg so we don't know the weight of the baby if it surpasses that senses instead of drowsiness they become hyperactive behavioral you know in the forms of increased anger and all occurs especially it's the toxic dose but if the baby is within the suppose if it is 20 mg per kg it is not going to have any much of a side effect as per the side effect profile is concerned levetiracetam is a good anti seizure medication compared to the earlier medications like phenobarbitone phenytoin which gives increased drowsiness phenobarbitone and all its best age old things so the levetiracetam is is a respectively safe uh, medication right 
ketogenic diet is one diet which in which you have to replace the carbohydrates that means the rice wheat uh, bread all those so sugary items and replace i mean so that means we are not going to touch any of those uh, substance containing foods instead we are using only fat and proteins in the, so every 3 to 4 gram of uh protein for a gram of uh, sorry fat to 1 gram of carbohydrate so the fuel is from the fat that means you need to include cheese you need to include butter dairy products then you have meat eggs so all those fat containing meat, fried foods all those fat containing meat, uh, diet we can include more but these Uh, off label if the baby is just having a bilateral occipital epilepsy we need not have to really subject the baby to a ketogenic diet because these sort of particular diet are main for medically refractory epilepsy where you don't uh, the seizures are not controlled with the multiple medications because here when we give this is a normal child and if this if we replace a carbohydrate everything with this uh, ketogenic diet alone we have to give a lot of supplements because this fat will not uh, fat will not contain vitamins fat will not contain minerals so we can't we have to give proteins so at this point of time we the main uh, our main agenda is to control seizures plus the growth of the child also because that is normal child except for that bil- uh, bilateral occipital epilepsy everything is normal for that baby so we need an overall growth for the baby so we need it's it's it's, it's enough that the baby takes the adequate balanced diet as any other individual the the aim of uh, giving a ketogenic diet is for individual who is not responding to seizures mind you so that is we are being done with supplementation of vitamins and minerals because the keto diet that will not contain all these okay. so for him marling uh, for for his daughter i think that is not uh, needed okay thank you thank you so much ma'am so Bindu, is- we have many questions over here i think we'll just go quickly there are many interesting questions yeah. So there is this twenty-two uh, year old man who is suffering from grand mal seizures for the past six years. This uh, this year the condition has got worsened. So whenever I have sleep deprivation, probably of uh, the probability of me getting seizures is high. So my question is, do you could you suggest if carbohydrates should be included in my diet? So he's saying sleep deprivation is causing his seizures. There's also somebody else who's also brought up the same issue, and yeah, I think again it's related to the ketogenic diet and other things, I guess. Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. So sleep for sleep deprivation, I think uh, uh, we need to address the sleep issues. We need to have a sleep hygiene, a good sleep hygiene, to control his seizures rather than you know uh, uh, switching on his diet. So whatever diet that he is taking, he can then but. we need to know what how what kind of diet he is taking obviously but i think the he himself knows that it is a sleep deprivation which is uh, precipitating his seizures so i think we need to address that issue thank you ma'am so here is one person my wife is 46 years old first episode uh, began at age of 30 and uh, she, her eeg eeg and mri were normal Uh, but then uh, she had to uh, i think they put her on some tablet torilaca torilaca sr750 and now the episode occurs after 3 months uh, whenever she is stressed out and uh, so they want to know should they continue the medicine for lifelong or can they stop uh, how does this work i mean like uh, should she should she should take the medicine only when there is seizure or should she In the details are very very sketchy to answer that question. It's very difficult to answer that medicine can be stopped or not on this platform. Uh, I suggest that let them take an appointment and seek a consultation for this because this is a very important and pertinent issue. 
I don't think this can be answered on this platform. It requires a a detailed EEG, a detailed analysis of her drug history and everything. Thank you. So here is somebody who is uh, an anonymous attendee. They want to know. Uh, she has been. Uh, I know whether she's a woman or a man. This person has been having seizures from birth. but uh, it is not genetic because the parents didn't have it but wants to know if her offspring will have it that's again a very interesting question dr bindu you want to answer a genetic epilepsy uh, which question is it is an anonymous attendee and she says i know it's a man, it's a man or woman they want to know i am having epilepsy from birth my parents don't have this is uh, No, though, uh, will my offspring get epilepsy? Please answer, Shizan. No, answer. the epilepsy is a very, uh, you know, the genetic listing is a complex thing. It is there is no monogenic inheritance for a genetic. So that so that comes to the uh, question that if the father is affected, there is no uh, the situation that the the child should. Hundred percent get affected or fifty percent get affected. So the monogeny means you know autosomal dominant, autosomal recessive kind of inheritance. So that is that kind of inheritance is not there. Actually, it's a polygenic inheritance. So mean uh, the baby or the the person's uh, child getting affected by this epilepsy, uh, we may not be able to tell. But suppose if we if we find out the genetic, uh, uh, we call genetic testing. so if there is an epigenetic mutation of certain particular genes which is guiding the channels we call it sodium channel potassium channels of which the abnormalities occurs and uh, resulting seizures so if there is something like that obviously then we will be able to know that the child can get affected otherwise speaking no we cannot categorically say that the child can get affected because it's very complex and it's a polygenic inheritance Thank you, thank you, ma'am. So I actually want to know. Actually, Doctor Prashikesh has asked a question to all. Uh, he wants to know what would you do if a person is having fits and is unconscious. Uh, I really want you to answer this question, but both of you, because yes, we do see people having seizures, and honestly, we don't know what to do. I only know they ask you to put something in the mouth so that the person doesn't bite his tongue. but uh, beyond that i wouldn't know how is it easy is it difficult to do something to a person when he is having a seizure on the road right um yeah i think one has to remember in a situation like anyone faces a patient having seizure three c's to remember it's very simple three c's first is stay calm in most of the situation the seizures will subside spontaneously one does not need to be very aggressive or does not need to be panicky about the situation and do things like uh, putting water in the mouth or putting sandals or got there are many weird things people do it but staying calm is the first thing the first c second would be cushion the head or basically what it means is make sure that the patient is not somewhere in the vicinity of any hazardous substance anything at elevation anything close to fire anything in an adventurous kind of a situation so coming injury and third call for the help and make sure that the patient gets a medical help as soon as possible this is the basic c's which anyone can do irrespective of the education irrespective of the background of any medical knowledge or so stay calm cushion or protect the head and call for help as soon as possible do not do anything which can further jeopardize the situation thank you i think uh, we should close the event here now because it has been very interesting and in case we get questions if there are more questions that are coming our way we will just mail it to you both so that we can answer them but i think most the people who have asked questions need to come and visit you because uh, their conditions are may not be serious but they are recurrent and they need uh, medical help another important thing just want to highlight here is uh, every patient with an epilepsy has a risk of something called as sudep or sudden death this is something which is very very important to understand and the risk of sudep 
is pretty high in children and uh, if the, there are parents who would wait and okay there is a one seizure in once in 6 months once in 4 months what different does it make but the data over all the world it shows that in particularly in children there is a 0.8 to 1.8% chance of a cumulative risk of sudden death due to an epilepsy or due to epileptic attack or so and that's a cumulative that means as the age advances this number is going to increase by about 2% every year so patient is having a fit or baby is having fits at 2 at the 2 years of age and this risk would probably the risk of having a sudden death would increase to 10% at the end of 10 years or so therefore it is very very important and pertinent to manage seizures with medications with proper consultation with doctor and of, uh, and being compliant with medications and yes in case the medications do not work and seizures still continue we definitely can offer as a surgery for control and even in some cases cure Thank you, thank you very much, Dr. Sarkar. Thank you very much, Dr. Bindu. It has been a very you. enlightening session. Thank you. Uh, uh, session where I learned a lot. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, madam, thank for you. elaborating. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Hindu, for giving us an opportunity, and also I thank uh, our MD Mayotte Hospital for giving us an opportunity to throw some light, at least, on some aspects of epilepsy care. Thank you, thank you, madam. It has been a fantastic experience talking to you and with the public. Thank you. Thank you.